Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, please. And we're in Ephesians chapter 4. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. And we're in chapter 4. And I want you to come down with me, please. We'll take up the reading down at verse number 29. Ephesians chapter 4, and come down with me, please, to verse number 29. And Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing upon the public reading of His own precious truth. One of the great blessings the Lord has graced the human body with is the gift of smell. Do you see the sense of smell this morning? Yes, smell. It can tell you many things. And in fact, the sense of smell can teach you many things. Yes, the sense of smell. In fact, the sense of smell can affect people. Some way is good, some way is bad. Don't know where I was the other day, I just cannot remember. But I sensed a smell that I didn't sense for a long time. And as soon as I sensed this particular smell, my mind went away back to the early days of P1 in primary school. You see, when I was at primary school in P1, we had a lollipop man who used to smoke a pipe. Years ago, you used to see the old men smoking a pipe. And in our cloakroom, where we used to take off our coats and hang them up on the, wall, uh, on the, on the hook, that's the first scent that hit us when we went through the school door was the scent of the old pipe smoke. And then tracing me, we were away at President Grant's ancestral home a number of years ago, and, and there was ladies there dressed in period costume, and, and they were making farrels of soda bread upon the griddle. It was the griddle you used, ladies, wasn't it? And upon the griddle. And as soon as I got that scent, oh... The hunger pangs went just mad. And it brought me back to my granny's kitchen. And that smell I could see, granny, it, you know, baking the, the, the scone of soda bread or the wee farls above the turf fire. And, and her dusting, her dusting the table with the old goose wing. Remember the old goose wings list? The goose, and there she was. And the scent, oh, those, for me, Smell brings back a lot of memories. But smell not only produces memories, but smell produces charm. You take after she. I remember one night for the Bible class, and I got myself all nicely dickied up and nice good close shave. And I put a wee bit on just to cool my face down. We'll hear too much come out. And I just got it like that there, and I slapped it all over my face, and I thought I put on jellic night all over my face. And Tracy says to me, Why, well, you smell like boots, chemist. 
But you know, you take aftershave. All the aftershave has their unique scent. You take Old Spice, for instance. That's a unique scent. You take denim. Why has denim worked well? It had a unique scent. Lynx had its, has its unique scent. Every one of them carries a unique scent. And of course, there's the perfume ladies. And every perfume has their unique scent. White linen. Oh, I know a little bit about perfume. You've got the white linen. And then, then there's the creed make of perfume. Spice and wood. I'll tell you, for a wee bottle of Creed Spice and Wood, you get it for £625 in Selfridges. Imagine buying a wee bottle of perfume, £625. I think that's where George Shilliday got the last bottle for Patsy. But anyway, I don't know. But they all have their unique scent. Smell is a blessing this morning. Outside our back door at home, we have wild honeysuckle growing in the hedge. And do you see the evening when it, maybe a wee shower of rain comes down, all the aroma just hits you and it's just lovely and sweet. Let's not forget this morning, God perfumed the roses. God perfumed the lilies. God perfumed the flowers. God perfumed all these things so that we could enjoy them. But there is an aroma this morning God wants. You and I, child of God, to focus on this morning. Not only focus on, but there's a perfume this morning that God wants you and I to produce from our own lives. It's the perfume this morning of Christ's likeness. I wonder, child of God, does the aroma of Christ come forth from these lives of ours? The aroma of Christ this morning. You see, the aroma of Christ, I believe, is the greatest aroma of all. The aroma of Christ. You see, you don't get this aroma anyway this morning because God wants to speak to us on the three great ingredients that there is for, Christ, for Christians to produce the aroma of Christ. Do you see saints this morning? Do you see the Christians this morning? We ought to be the most perfumed people in the world, not perfumed with aftershave, perfumed with Christ. And our text this morning brings before us the three great ingredients that every believer in Christ needs to possess if we are to produce the aroma of Christ. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 this morning, verse 32. Listen to what it says, And be ye kind-hearted one to another. That's the first ingredient. Here's the second one, tender-hearted. Here's the third one, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You cannot be Christ-like if you cannot be kind. You cannot be Christ-like if you cannot be tender-hearted. You cannot be Christ-like if you cannot forgive. Oh, child of God, this morning you cannot be Christ-like if you cannot be kind. 
How can one be Christ-like if we can't be king? How can one be Christ-like if we can't be tender-hearted? How can one be Christ-like if we can't be forgiven? I'll tell you this, child of God. You can run to every meeting every night of the week and you'll be as less Christ-like than anybody else. Producing the aroma of Christ does not run the meetings every night of the week or carrying a big Bible under your arm either. I know more people and they've run to more meetings all their life and they're more Christ-like than anybody else. No more Christ-like. The aroma of Christ this morning. Do others sense the aroma of Christ from us? Do others sense the aroma of Christ from you? Do others sense the aroma of Christ from me? Number one, Paul brings out the first ingredient. We're calling it the key of kindness. Notice it's not forgiveness first. Notice this not tender-heartedness first. It's kindness. Be ye kind one to another. And the key of kindness this morning unlocks the door that brings out the aroma of Christ. Do you know something about kindness this morning? Kindness is the language that the deaf can hear. Do you remember that? Kindness is the language that the deaf can hear. And kindness is the language that the blind can see. Kindness. How can one expect this morning to be Christ-like if we can't be kind? How can anyone expect to produce the aroma of Christ in their lives if we fail to be kind? Kindness. Kindness. Kindness was one of the great graces within the very life of the Lord Jesus. Tell me, are you carrying the key of kindness this morning? Am I carrying the key of kindness? Not carrying the big Bible. No, carrying the key of kindness. You cannot be Christ-like without the key of kindness. You see, kindness? Kindness is one of the great graces that perfumes the, the life of a Christian. Mind you, Boaz carried the key of kindness. When he saw, when he saw Ruth the Moabitess, he said, let a few handfuls of purpose fall for her. She is poor. She is needy. She is a stranger. Let a few handfuls of purpose fall for her now. The key of king. Maybe the Lord will bring someone across your path, child of God. Or he could possibly bring somebody across my path in need this week to prove to you and to prove to me if we possess the key of king. You see, you cannot be Christ-like without king. Do you remember the good Samaritan? Why, if there ever was a man who carried the key of kindness, it was the good Samaritan. I'll tell you, the Levite didn't carry the key of kindness. Not at all. The Levite went over and looked at him and passed by on the other side. 
And do you remember the priest? He came along. He looked down and saw this man in a terrible state. What did the Levite do? The Levite, he, the, 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 the priest, he done the same thing, crossed by to the other side. You see, that's what religion does. Our religion will look at you, but religion won't do anything for you. But who came to him? It was, the, it was the last man the man would have expected, the Samaritan man. But the Samaritan man came to him. Abbey didn't come to him. He got down to him. And when he got down to him, he lifted him and carried him and burned up his wounds. I'm telling you, friend, if any man that you can see Christ in us, the good Samaritan, you see, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans, but yet it was the Samaritan that loved him and paid the price for him. You know, you cannot produce the aroma of Christ this morning if you cannot be kind. You know what Proverbs 19.22 says? The desire of a man is his kindness. Kindness always makes a man desirable. It never makes him detestable. Did you get that? Kindness always makes a man desirable. It never makes a man detestable. And you know, child of God, this is what makes you and I desirable this morning. If we're carrying the key of kindness. When William McKinley became the 25th president of the United States of America, he was making his way to the congr congressional office in a tram. And his colleague was traveling with him, and the tram stopped. And this old lady got on the tram. She could hardly stand. And they helped her on to the tram, and McKinley's colleague stood there, or sat there, and wouldn't give her her seat, and she stood there so helpless and powerless, holding on to the strap. And his colleague pathetically just hid his face behind the paper. It was McKinley who got up of his seat and gave the lady his seat. Many years later, this man was nominated to be the ambassador for America. But William McKinley totally rejected the man to be the ambassador for the United States of America. This is what McKinley said. If this kindness is of the quality he showed that morning in the tram, I fear what he would might do representing us in a foreign land. Listen, child of God, none of us can be true ambassadors for God in this world without the key of kindness. You cannot be Christ-like if you cannot be kind. Look at the second thing, the second ingredient in that text. There's not only the key of kindness, ah, but there's the touch of tender-heartedness. I wonder this morning, do you and I carry that nature? Do you know what tender-heartedness means? It means you have a heart that bleeds. It means you have a heart that's touched. It means you have a heart that feels for other people. I don't think, child of God, you can be Christ-like if you cannot be tender-hearted this morning. And yet there are so many believers who are cutting the throat of one another. And they should be ashamed of themselves if they do it. Nobody was more tender-hearted than that, our blessed Savior. Nobody. The tender heart this morning is the sympathetic heart. 
Tender-heartedness is the affectionate heart. Tender-heartedness is the compassionate heart. And someday, some evening in our Bible study, we'll be looking at this verse, 1 Peter 3, 8, Be ye of all men, having compassion one of another. Love us, brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Friend, there was none more so compassion. There was none more so loving. There was none more so pitiful. There was none more so courteous than the Lord Jesus Himself. We cannot be Christly if we cannot be tender heart. How can we be perfumed this morning with the aroma of Christ if we fail to carry the key of kindness, if we fail to have the touch? of tender-heartedness. In the previous verse, Paul calls believers to abolish the fragrances of the flesh. Listen to what he says. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. We're to abolish the attitude of the flesh, but we're to adopt the aroma of Christ. Listen to what it says, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted. Do you know, child of God, you and I are to bless one another, not break one another. We are to be perfumed this morning with the key of kindness. We're to be perfumed this morning with the touch of tender heartedness. How can we? That's the challenge to my own heart this morning. How can we be perfumed with the aroma of Christ if we fail to possess the key of kindness? How can, we be, how can we be perfumed with the aroma of Christ if we, if we are not touched by tender-heartedness? Ah, but look at the text again. And I think he comes to the greatest one of all as the fragrance of forgiveness. Look at what it says. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Do you see the key of kindness? That's the door to the aroma of Christ. Do you see the touch of tenderness? That's the delight of the aroma of Christ. Do you see the fragrance of forgiveness? That's the depth of the aroma of Christ. How can we be Christly if we cannot forgive? Wonders there's someone here this morning. God wants you to forgive somebody. Is there somebody here this morning? God's not asking you to say sorry. God's asking you this morning to forgive someone. Because we cannot carry the aroma of Christ if we cannot forgive. Paul says in Colossians 3.13, If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Do you know it's sad how many Christians are crippled because they are unable to forgive? Paul 
Paul says, even as God, for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Do you see the fragrance of forgiveness this morning? It knocks people for six. Gordon Wilson, on the evening of the Inniskillen bomb, pouring out his heart on national television, said these words concerning those who planted the bomb, concerning those who took the life of his daughter Murray. This is what Gordon Wilson said on live television. I bear no ill will. I bear no grudge. And for those who planted the bomb, I'll pray for them tonight and every night. Just a few weeks ago, there was a thing on TV called Yesterday to do with the dark days of the Troubles, and one news reporter said this. Gordon Wilson spoke the most powerful words ever to be spoken in the dark days of the Troubles. In fact, in Belfast, there was a loyalist retaliation squad going out and planning mayhem and murder for the week in retaliation. And when they heard Gordon Wilson say those words on television, they couldn't do it. The power of forgiveness. Are you and I this morning perfumed with the key of kindness? We ought to be. Are you and I this morning, child of God, perfumed with the touch of tender-heartedness? Mind ye, we ought to be. Do you and I this morning carry the fragrance of Christ? The aroma of Christ, do we, are we perfumed with the aroma of Christ by possessing the fragrance of forgiveness? Mind you, we ought to be. Running away from someone that you must forgive doesn't heal the hurt. It only loads on more, more hurt. And so many Christians today are pained because they cannot forgive. On the last day of the American Civil War, Joshua Chamber Chamberlain, who was in command of the Union Army, commanded his men to stand on both sides of the road. As the Confederates come marching down to sign the surrender, he told his men to line up on both sides. There was no taunting. No vicious words. Their swords were to be raised in order to salute the foe as they surrendered. Chamberlain said, the best way to end the war is to show forth our forgiving spirit. That's how believers end disputes with the fragrance of forgiveness. If everybody carried the key of kindness, if every Christian carried the touch of tender heartedness, if every Christian carried the fragrance of forgiveness, there'd be less church splits.
May the Lord search our hearts. May he search my heart. Because we ought to be the most perfumed people on this planet. Bearing forth within the fellowship the aroma of Christ. Bearing outside in a world that's perishing in sin. Bearing the aroma of Christ. Too many believers think, and I'm going to say this again because this is what's happening. Too many people think carrying the aroma of Christ is walking about with a big star face on you and a Bible under your arm because it's not. That did nothing for me when I wasn't saved. The aroma of Christ is found in those three ingredients this morning. Kindness, tenderheartedness, forgiveness. Many a Christian parent has drove their children away from the Lord. And I'll tell you why. Because they didn't carry the aroma of Christ in the home. And their children's nowhere. The aroma of Christ must be first and foremost experienced in the home, experienced in the fellowship, experienced in the community. Are we a perfumed people bearing forth the aroma of Christ? May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Our closing